Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Today I'm going to start a new series of episodes called Vintage Book Report. And to kick this off, we've got two separate books today. One of those is a vintage book about a vintage subject, and the other one is a new book about a vintage subject. First, for the vintage book, this is the User's Guide to the Commodore 64 and VIC-20. It's kind of an interesting little book. It's a fairly quick read, and there's a lot of pictures. And you can see that it was only five or six bucks in the bargain book bin back in the day. The new book is Commodore the Inside Story by David Pleasance. He was in sales in Commodore on the international level and ran various departments in different places around the world. And it's also kind of an interesting book and it's a different perspective to Commodore than what we normally get you know, about all the engineering and technical things. So it's well worth a read. Let's take a look at these two books and discuss them in a little more detail. So here is our user's guide to the Commodore 64 and VIC-20. You can think of this as kind of a quick start type of manual for somebody back in the day getting their first computer and they really didn't know anything about it. So it was intended as an easy way to get introduced to what all the parts of the computer are, how you connect things, and you know, how all the buttons work and what they all do. This copy is in fairly good condition. There's a little water damage, but it's okay. A bit of a welcome section, an overview, and a nice picture of the VIC-20. Kind of gives you an idea of what all the main parts are. And it does the same thing for the Commodore 64. Even, you know, connecting it to your TV or monitor, very basic stuff. But, you know, at this point in time, computers were brand new to most people. And they didn't have any idea how to go about hooking things up or what to do with it. Connecting the cords to your computer, what all the main buttons are. And there's lots of nice full color photographs throughout the book. And they show you both on the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 how to do all the things. There's screenshots on the, the Commodore 64 and VIC-20. And when I say screenshots, these are actually where they had to set a camera up to photograph the CRT because that's how it was done at the time. What the cursor keys do, control keys, clear home, the number keys. It's very basic, but it's uh, at a high enough level that, you know, uh, oh, an older child or an adult could understand it. How you set the different screen colors. There's really only some very basic programming just kind of show you how things work. It's not a programming manual by any stretch. But it's rather interesting. And uh, because of its uniqueness, all the full color photographs and the quick start nature of it. I think it's a very nice book to have. And then in the back it goes through the different peripherals you can get. Monitors, printers, joysticks, printer interfaces, RAM expansions, modems, paddles, etc. A brief troubleshooting guide, different software that's available. And one of the things I thought was most interesting, there is a list of user clubs in the different states in the United States listed by state. And um, it's just kind of interesting that in a lot of cases, these are going to be people's uh, home addresses. Some of them have P.O. boxes. And, you know, it's kind of the grassroots of starting user clubs and reaching out to other people with similar interests, whereas now, we have the internet for that sort of things. And even different bulletin board services. So, if you have a chance to pick up this book and it's not too expensive, I think it's an interesting one to have in your collection. Here is our new book. As I mentioned briefly in the introduction, uh, David Pleasance was in sales in Commodore. 
and he kind of worked at many different places in the world in uh, England and continental Europe and the United States as well and for me being a technical engineering technician sort of person you know with that background the sales and business side of it was you know a different perspective and a lot of things I'd never considered before and it kind of gives you an idea of how you can have good products and good people in many cases in a company that in many cases doesn't have a clue what it's doing or what it's selling or what people really want to buy it's a very nice book it's hardcover it wasn't very expensive David even signed it which was nice it's a, it's a very high quality publication I was very impressed and so it goes through kind of his introduction with a uh, Commodore kind of his background that type of thing you know the, the early days of Commodore and even when they hired him the position they hired him for didn't really exist they couldn't make enough pets for him to to sell to a home market so he got shifted around right away so it's a an early indication that Commodore really didn't you know have a good idea of what it was doing or the planning behind it and there's lots of pictures in this too I'm talking about the different plants in England the different uh, people involved when the plus four came out good picture of the staff at the launch of the Amiga 1000 one interesting point that Mr. Pleasance made that I hadn't really considered before is simple things like a company asking its customers what they really want. One of the things that he did that allowed Commodore to be really successful in the UK and in many places in Europe was he went out and talked to the retailers that sold Commodore and asked them what they wanted, what people wanted to buy, what would make their life easier. And they came out with the Commodore and Amiga packs which included games so people got games and you know things to start out with you know a whole set of things they could immediately be productive with so the consumer got a good price on things the retailer made more sales and the people publishing these games and everything got a lot more sales too so everybody won people got what they wanted and everybody made some money and there's some interesting sections on the upper management of Commodore and it's kind of interesting that no matter what your field is or you know where you're at in a company that there are very competent people and very incompetent people at every level there are people that know absolutely nothing about the business they're in which I won't mention any names here or Mehdi Ali but somehow they've risen to that position and make absolutely terrible decisions that affect everybody and wind up ruining the company because they just don't know anything about it. And there are other people in the world that may not know a lot about the technical aspects of the business they're in, but they hire the right people and they know enough about business to make good business decisions and take the advice of the right technical people and they can be very successful. What he did after Commodore and you get to the back and there are short chapters from other people involved with Commodore and the Amiga uh, engineering people and people from that did different things in software and uh, things like that that are all kind of interesting to kind of get that behind the scenes look even you know names you'll find familiar today like Stephen Jones Dave Haney and some you might not have heard of and at the very end there's a quote section with different people peripherally related to Commodore from different software companies etc that are also interesting you know things they remember from working with Commodore at that time So 
I've read through this whole book, and it's one I would definitely understand, uh, as I said, because of the different perspective it provides. And, you know, the understanding it brought to me about the whole company, not just the technical parts. So you can have a really good product, it can be the best computer or widget in the world, and if you don't have the other parts of the company there to support that, and to advertise it and promote it and to demonstrate it to people and to support it after the sale then you probably won't be uh, very successful in the long run. Well I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at these two nice books. I'll put a link to this book in the description below as you can still purchase it and it's one I would highly recommend. It's a very interesting look from a different perspective at the Commodore Company. Because of the nice full color pictures in this book, if you're into collecting things like that, this would also be nice to have in your collection if you can get it for not too much money. If you like this idea of the vintage book reports, let me know in the comments section down below. If you're not already subscribed, look down below for that rectangular subscribe button and click on that guy. Once you subscribe, you'll see a bell-shaped icon. If you click on that, you'll be notified just as soon as I post a new video. If you have any comments or questions or things you would like me to cover or perhaps book reports you'd like me to do, just let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks, until next time. Bye.